I want to thank everyone at Berman for giving me this first annual Tzionut Award. I want to congratulate uh, Rabbi Zucker on the recognition that he is deservedly getting today. He's somebody who's taught uh, my children and I know that he, they admire him for being somebody who practices uh, what he preaches and for being such a great role model. I want to uh, congratulate Nava Menachem and thank them for all the work that they've done to strengthen the Jewish community um, over these many, many years. Um, I'm honored to receive this award. I remember the impression, one of the first impressions I had when I walked into the Berman Day School seven years ago was that I looked at the walls and I looked in the classrooms and I looked at how important Israel was uh, to the school. Even more important than the classrooms and the walls when I went to Hebrew Academy in Miami Beach uh, some 35, 40 years ago. And so I saw that this was uh, a school that really saw centrality in Israel uh, and Zionism. And I was thinking in receiving this award, this award that um, many people have questioned the connection between Jews in the diaspora in general and in the United States in particular, question the connection between those Jews in the state of Israel. Many people believe that somehow our communities are uh, pulling apart. Um, I don't think that's true. In fact, I think it's historically wrong. Uh, a lot of people who will only focus on what's happened over the last few years don't understand the history of the relationship between Israel and diaspora Jews and how a hundred years ago very few American Jews uh, were Zionists. And actually Zionism came about uh, after, in, in mass, uh, after the Holocaust and really after 1967. Um, I think in, in a powerful way throughout the United States. So I think compared to where we were in the past, I think Israel and the diaspora are actually closer than we have been at many times uh, before. But I also think that many people fail to recognize a great uh, transition that has happened, a great change that has happened in the life of the Jewish people with the birth of Israel. Because when Israel was established in 1948, only about 5% of the world's Jews lived in Israel. Uh, today, Israel is the largest Jewish community in the world for the first time since the days of Bar Kokhba. About 45% of the world's Jews live in Israel. And so this transition is obviously going to create changes between Israel, which now has become the center of Jewish life in the world, not just in a spiritual sense, not just in a metaphorical sense, but in a practical sense of having the largest Jewish community in the world. And uh, uh, the United States, which went from being so central to Jewish life to now being sort of a moon to Israel's uh, sun. A second area is I think it's not sufficiently understood how Israel has grown uh, as a power in recent decades. We are no longer sort of the poor uh, nephew that has to be supported all the time by our American Jewish uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, we still receive support and we are grateful for that support, but Israel has emerged as a very powerful country with a high GDP per capita, a global technological power, leading in many areas like cyber and artificial intelligence. We are a very strong, prosperous, and vibrant society. And I think that has changed the nature of the relationship. Um, and I think also many people do not remember, um, many American Jews have forgotten naturally what it's like to live in a world without an Israel because Israel is celebrating its 72, 72nd uh, birthday. So if you're not over the age of 80, you couldn't possibly remember a world without an Israel. And if you're not over the age of 60, you cannot remember a, a vulnerable Israel. And I think that has changed opinions, and it's natural for those changes to happen. If there is one thing that could potentially affect a rupture or a growing apart of Israel and the diaspora, of Israel and diaspora Jews, it will be an attenuated Jewish identity. Most of the reasons why you could potentially have friction is not because this or that policy of this or that government in Israel and differences of opinion that we may have about politics. What will make us grow apart is an attenuated Jewish identity. If someone's Jewish identity is not important to them, why should a Jewish state be important to them? And that's why one of my illustrious predecessors as ambassador, Yitzhak Rabin, when asked what is the thing that American Jews can do for Israel, said, well, you should give your kids a Jewish education. 
you should strengthen their Jewish identity. He said that 50 years ago when he was ambassador, and I say the same thing since I've been ambassador. It's the strengthening of Jewish education, the strengthening of Jewish identity that actually helps forge these remarkable bonds between Israel uh, and American Jews and Jews all across the world. And that's where you come in at Berman. Because all of you watching me today, you have participated, you have been a partner in strengthening Jewish identity and in instilling a great sense of Jewish pride and in instilling a great pride of Israel in those students. And in doing so, you have actually become partners with the state of Israel uh, at securing the Jewish future. And I want to express my thanks for this award. I want to express my thanks to all of you. And you've achieved one thing that is truly remarkable, that uh, no one who's ever given me an award has ever achieved, is you got one of my children to say something positive about me. And for that, I will never forget this honor, will never forget this award, and I'll always be grateful. Thank you.